Hello everyone, I'm Sam Fry and welcome to a brand new episode of Technique. This one recorded at the v as Digital Design Weekend. And it was at this event that I interviewed someone about a new project they're working on. Who is it? Well, you can find out after this. In this month's episode, I speak to Clara Crivellaro a research fellow at Newcastle University and who has a project that she's working on called Not Equal. Here's Clara. Hi, I'm Clara Crivellaro. I'm a researcher at Newcastle University Open Lab, which is a human-computer interaction research lab. So in this episode, we're going to talk about the ethics of technology, focusing on the Not Equal project that Clara is working on. She talks about it quite a bit in the episode, but Not Equal is a national network that aims to foster collaborations between communities and network partners, with the aim to develop practical responses to the issues of social justice in the world of digital technology. So that's going to be the focus of the episode. But before we jump into the interview, I wanted to reflect a little bit on the Digital Design Weekend itself. For those that haven't been before, it's a really great event where artists present some of their technology projects. This year's weekend focused in particular on artificial intelligence, so there are lots of works there, including some of our Technique favourites. Rachel Ara, for instance, who has spoken at one of our Technique events before, was there with a holographic mixed reality experience. Plus, Cecil Falconstrom, who also has spoken and presented at a Technique event, was there with her artificial intelligence, Frank, which is an artificial intelligence that gives you personal advice and acts a bit like a guru. Anyway, it's a fantastic weekend. And if you're interested in digital art and have the ability to get to London, then I'd recommend it each year. It's normally in September towards the end of the month. So now back into the interview where I interviewed Clara sat in the green room at the back of the digital design weekend. So every now and then there are people walking in and out grabbing sandwiches or having a chat. So apologies for some noise in the background. My first question to Clara was how she got interested in some of the topics that Not Equal explores. Well, I'm a, an artist and designer by background. Before joining uh, research and academia, I was working for many years as a socially engaged art practitioner. Um, so I've always been politically motivated and I always saw art as a way to make visible what is not visible and get people to think differently about themselves, their lives and society. As I joined academia, I started working in the field of human-computer interaction where my work looks specifically at how design and technology can support social justice and democratic practices. Yeah, well, I studied arts and design, actually performance art and photographic practice. But then I went on and did a master in curating, so curatorial art practice, where I looked specifically at the role of the artist, the socially engaged artist as a curator working with communities. And in that sense, I was fortunate enough to work with different uh, NGOs and different organizations uh, looking into how supporting people to discuss uh, issues uh, they live uh, with in their everyday life can be a starting point for emancipation and social change. So I use arts as a medium to express those issues and make those visible. I was particularly interested in place and how, for example, what people associate with home come to change because of, for example, urban regeneration processes or political decisions that are taken not by the people themselves. So how do you support people to come to terms with particular changes in their locality and then strategize and develop actions as a response to those? So moving on to the digital, if you like, I then found a digital technology as a way to amplify people's voices or looking at how that technology can 
support people um, amplify their own voices. But I think technology has two sides. That is, technology can either support social justice or actually increase social injustices and making it worse. So clearly, technology has these two sides to it. So Not Equal, which is this network we are currently working on, which is a three-year project funded by UK Research and Innovation, looks exactly at how we can bring together all perspectives, so from uh, members of the public to civil society organisations, industry and academia, to explore the, the sorts of social justice issues that are connected to new and emerging technologies and their design and their use in society today. And obviously you depart from an, an exploration of what are these issues in order to create responses that can make it better. The project sort of started with that sort of realization that technology has uh, this dual aspect. We started off with three broad challenge areas, one called algorithmic social justice, so we, there we are looking at automated or semi-automated decision making, so looking at how the algorithms and underpinning artificial intelligence or maybe more simple, simpler computing systems, looking at the logic, if you like, underpinning these algorithms and the biases that are embedded there and whether there are different ways in which we can respond to these issues. And then the second uh, big challenge that we are just starting looking at is called Digital Security for All. So that challenge begins with the recognition that current cybersecurity and security systems fail to take care of all sections of society. And the thing there is to recognize that different people need different things and therefore their digital security needs may also be different. And the third big and broad thematic area or challenge has to do with the future of work and workforces. And there we are particularly looking into the platform economy, how from one end we may be able to explore alternative business models for the platform economy that may result in working practices that are fairer for the workforce in the digital economy. But me, we may also be looking into how technologies are slowly entering our working lives and how also algorithms may be used to recommend particular people for some jobs as opposed to others and, and all sorts of range, range of issues uh, associated with that. Well, actually, the project is just starting now. It's a three-year project. And our departure point, yes, it's true, we have these uh, three big challenge areas, but we want to engage now as much as we can with both you know, publics and communities, but also with people from the third sector, industry and academia, and ask them to tell us what matters to them, what are the real burning issues that may fit within these three broad challenge areas or may not. And we would be open with that as long as obviously uh, are tackling the sort of broad agenda of social justice in the digital economy. So we are going to be doing this by talking to people really, but also organizing small satellite events where we can tell people about our activities and opportunities. And uh, so we have three main programs. One we call the Open Events Program, and there we deliver but also fund and support 
individuals and organizations running uh, their own workshops, design sprints, or hackathon that are exploring and tackling some of these issues. Um, so we have a pot of funding for that. The second program we have, it's we call Open Commissioning. And there we'll support network partners, so civil society, industry, and academic partner working together to develop project proposal that responds to the issues that the network have identified or that has been identified through workshops, design sprints, or hackathons. And then our third strand is a youth and community engagement program where we aim to involve people in thinking about these issues, discussing these issues, but also, again, tell us what they think are uh, the really critical issues in their everyday life so that we can use this information to provoke third sector industry and academic partners to respond collaboratively to this. These are our main strands. We'll have two big calls for funding. One will be in January, where we launch the commissioning process, January 2019. And the second call will be around October 2019. We also will be working with a panel made of citizens, members of the public, who will help our panel of experts decide which proposal should be funded by the network or not, according to what they see as critical and important to them. This is the social justice and technology network. So it needed to be grassroots as much as or we would like it to be. And we'd like our commissioning process to be as co-produced as possible. So from one end, we start by asking people what matters, what are the things that matters to them when we think about social justice and technology in their lives. We we'll use those insights and perspectives and thoughts to provoke academic industry partners and third sector organization to respond to them. And then once they've generated their proposals for projects, then we'll bring back people from uh, our group of citizens to co-decide with our panel of experts which project should be funded. So I think it's, uh, it's a co-production model that we are really keen uh, to implement. We'll, we'll sort of ensure that the voices of all concerned are part of this. Obviously, when we talk about technology and social, the kind of issues that technology brings to the fore today necessarily demands the perspectives of all involved. So technology practitioners, designers, uh, users, or so people who consume and use these technologies, as well as government bodies and uh, academics and researchers. It'd be an interesting test of a kind of process in itself. Exactly. Uh, but why not? I think we yeah, should, uh, yeah, we should go that. for it. <laughs> if you're a, an individual or an organisation, how is best to kind of get in touch? Yeah, so we have a website, www.notequal.com. Tech. And if you go to our website, you'll just find the information about the network and you can sign up. We are living in really complex and interesting times. From one end, the power of computation really take us to be able to see and think things that we were not able to see and think about before. And that's really exciting. On the other end, particular uses of these technologies that sort of carry with them really old assumptions about society and how we should understand 
one another are incredibly dangerous because the scale of the, what this technology do brings um, these issues to a different scale. So we, I was uh, discussing just earlier on with somebody around the fact that, of course, social justice has always existed and social injustices have always existed. But, of course, some of these uh, technologies do bring the sort of surveillance, if you like, that we are capable of doing to ourselves to a new scale, which is unprecedented. I think every era, every new technological advance brought with it new injustices. So if you think about the Industrial Revolution, brought all sorts of kind of really unjust practices, if you think just if you think about child labor, which of course, you know, it has not uh, gone away completely globally, uh, not at all, but at least in the UK, it did, ta- it did take a while, but eventually people caught up with it and uh, sort of created new regulations and legislation. So there was a moment in which people said, no, this is unacceptable. And I think now when we are thinking about artificial intelligence, these uh, new and emerging technologies, we are going through those sort of questioning. It, it really is the case to sort of think about the consequences of these way before it's too late or way before the big damage is done because of the scale of the issues. <laughs> We need to have the big tech company. We need to have them having these conversations with us. I think there is a moment for shouting out and there is a moment for creating division, perhaps. I don't think this is a moment for division. I think this is a moment for more dialogue and more collaborative response making. And I say response instead of solutions because, of course, some of the issues that we are talking about do not have a solution, uh, certainly not an easy one, but there are many different responses and ways in which we can make these very complex issues more visible and their consequences be more fairer for everyone in society, including the very most vulnerable, who sometimes are the ones who are suffering the most and quite in in an invisible way. I think they need to be part of these conversations and they need to listen. And I think we need to mutually understand what are the best way forward. So that was Clara and also Not Equal, the project. If you want to find out a bit more about Not Equal, then you can go to their website. It's not-equal.tech. And as she mentioned in the episode, they will be doing some of their first funding rounds quite soon. Thanks again for listening to this episode. If you did like this episode, please let us know by tweeting us at Technique UK. And also tell us how we can improve these episodes. Are there other types of artists that you'd like us to speak to about technology? Or perhaps we can change the format in some way. Whatever your suggestions, let us know. We really like hearing from our listeners. There will, of course, be another episode this time next month. But before we end, I just want to say thank you again to those that created music for this episode. Sean Miller created a lot of the music. And the last piece you just heard was by Kular. So that's all from us for now. And we'll speak to you again next month. In the meantime, take very good care of yourselves. (laughs) 